I'm an Italian chef that from Italy I moved all the way to Texas to work for the very best barbecue restaurant in business to master the craft of barbecue. Now I'll teach barbecue worldwide. My name is Max and this is Texicana Barbecue. What's up everybody, Texicana Barbecue. Today we're going to cook some pork ribs. We're going to make Texas style pork ribs and pimped pork ribs. All right, this is a sort of, let's call it a dirty San Luis cut. What we're gonna do, trimming the ribs, very essential. We're just gonna do some little touch up here and there. There's not much to trim really. As for brisket, I like to keep a round shape in everything I do. So not a big fan of corners. And then the mortal question. Membrane yes, membrane no. I say it depends the way you cook. If you run 220, the membrane it won't melt, it's gonna be chewy. So membrane no. If you're running like me 270, a happy 270, the membrane, what's gonna happen, will stick and and that's it. You you cannot really feel it. Little bit of mustard. And then, big secret right here, it will change your life. That's it. Little pickle juice. You can avoid seasoning salt, for sure. It's more for color purposes than anything else. Same on top. Little pickle juice. I like it. We gotta go a little bit heavier, more careful on top. Because you know, Texas style is all about the bark. Try not to be splashy, try to be as even as possible. And sometimes it's not much about the seasoning, but it's the way we season. It's gonna make a whole lot of difference. You can season just fine with an, a very unbalanced rub, but if you don't know how to season, you know, the shake shake move, uh, you can have a bad result also with a perfect rub. If the cooking chamber of your smoker is particularly wet and you have a hard time setting the bark, let it sit for half an hour, an hour, the seasoning, it will help the formation of the bark. We're gonna kick it up a little bit, these ribs, the pimped ribs, over here we have a little piece of belly. These are nice and medium. I like these, these ribs. We'll take off this pork belly. And don't leave it on because it's not gonna taste right. It's not gonna look right. It's just gonna mess up. Even if you sacrifice the bone, that's fine. This bone is it, not gonna have nothing, but it kind of protects my ribs a little bit, so I leave it on. Same same for the little corner on the left. There are one or two little bones in that corner. They're probably gonna get dark. They're gonna get burned, but their purpose is protecting uh, my good bones. So I call it collateral damage. By doing that, I don't have to worry where the source of heat come from and flip-flopping the ribs around. As for brisket, ribs, they can, they can shrink quite a bit. So before we put on a smoker, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna shrink it up like this. In every country and state that I cook, brisket is always loved, Texas style. But with experience, I learned to stick the, with local flavor for ribs. So in places like Florida, Brazil and so forth, you gotta go sweeter. So this rib is gonna have less pepper, more sweet and more red color. Even though taste and flavor profile will be very different, both ribs, they're not gonna be sticky. So my goal is to let the sauce dry in both ribs. The cooking process will be the same. What's gonna change is that the pimped up ribs, we are just gonna pour a thick glaze on it. But uh, they won't be sticky and on the other ribs we're gonna put uh, barbecue sauce and a little runnier glaze. All right, our pimped ribs this way. Texas style ribs, the way we're gonna cook it is same same. We're gonna give it a, considering the thickness of the ribs, about, we'll check in two hours, two and a half hours and then we wrap. It's been a couple of hours here to the cook because we were running other stuff 
a little bit lower so I decided to put the ribs in a top rack we're running uh, about 270 so right now about a couple of hours into the cook uh, the ribs need a little spritz with the magic juice So do not overdo it, overdo the spritzing because otherwise you're gonna wash out uh, all the smoke and stuff. As you can see, they're still stiff. And now the ribs are starting, how they call it, snailing. They make a sort of a fuzzy bubble on the surface. When they start cracking, it's about time to wrap. All right, it's been about a good two and a half hour into the cook. Now, we see now here they're stiff, but this crack is a sign they're ready to wrap. I'm happy with the color. I don't want to go any darker than that. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna wrap it. We flip them over. As I was telling you earlier, you see the uh, the membrane. It's almost does it's not even there. Once we, we pull out of the wrap, it won't make any difference. So I do not put any sauce inside. I like to put at the end. One, two, and three. So this will be a little sign here. This is the Texas style with a little unicorn. And this is the, the pimp trips. One, two, three, four. gonna give depends the thickness of the ribs I will guess another good hour averaging 280 300 uh, depends again depends the thickness if they are not that thick you can keep uh, at 270 but you, you don't want to lose the momentum of heat so before we were worrying about makeup aesthetic now we're getting into the meat all right now we're in about 50 minutes after wrap this one is our Texas style the way I, I see it you see over here they look dead they they feel really dead I don't know how to explain it better than this it's like an empty uh, a bag of potato you know and the bag almost feel empty then of course there is many degree many degrees uh, of doneness uh, I like to do to have a little bite into it not completely soft and this is what it is this, the bone they still they start sticking out uh, we flip it this guy and that's what we have so by by not putting any sauce or barbecue or nothing i'm not worried or burning anything i don't think you have to add, add extra butter on ribs and stuff to me the pork does a great job already is already balanced and stuff so this is what i'm looking for very simple and they had this mahogany uh they're not pimped out the other pimped out ribs they're gonna be ready soon uh but this is what I'm gonna do. So at this stage, what I do, I just keep it like this. The barbecue sauce and glazing that I'm using today, I'm gonna leave a link below in the description. Check my video, best barbecue sauce. Basically it's a Bruce Hogg replica and I add a little bit, I would say a quarter cup for this cup of vinegar to make it runnier. It's important for me. I don't wanna ruin this beauty. So to me, the, the, the the sauce is just a finishing taste, it has to be transparent, but what I want to see it is this guy over here, okay? And just because I have a Terry's Black in my hand, if you look at the 24 hour shift, shift the Terry's Black, also great rib, it almost takes 8 hours to, to cook the ribs, you know, uh, different, different way, same direction. And I spritz like this. So this is intentionally very watery. It just, I don't want to thick. Uh, I just want to be transparent. My purpose is right now to let it dry up and that's, that's, that will be about it. So once I put the barbecue sauce, we're just gonna run the pit at 220, 225, just for let the sauce dry. You know, the, the barbecue sauce is pretty sugary. I do not want to burn this. So bef before I was pushing it without caring. Right now, I'm carrying without pushing. With the pimp ribbed instead. So in this glaze, there is the achiote, which comes from the urucum seed. It's a plant. Uh, I discovered achiote 
which is called Colorado in Brazil, about three years ago. When I went over there, I got invited to the Churrascada. It's a big, big event in Brazil. You guys check them out, Churrascada. And, uh, and I found, you know, I was shopping for spices and peppers and so forth, and I found this, uh, this red powder it was in every shop. And I found out that that is a chote. So we have over here in Texas is like the Mexican version. There's a little tiny bit of spiciness into it, uh, but the Brazilian one is just color. It's basically tasteless. And I, I started using it ever since. We also use the chote in a whole hog that uh, uh, my buddy, uh, Mike from Frodo's Tortilla and Brett's from Brett's Barbecue, a whole hog video. I'm gonna leave all this uh, the different video and, and the link below in the description. But so anyway, long story short, what we need to do here we need to uh, we make this glaze. This is a 80% sugar, 20% water, and I just melt while I'm cooking uh, the uh, the glaze a little bit. I will say like this of a chote in it. So what we're gonna do? Because we're gonna make a little bit thicker, we're gonna add some pectin. Pectin is the difference between a liquid solution and a jelly. Will is a, a jellyfy powder. So jam, marmalade, all the stuff that have pectin in it. Otherwise there will be juice without pectin. It's naturally uh, containing fruit, like uh, strawberry, raspberry, they have a lot of pectin. What we're gonna do, we're just gonna mix it. You should heat them up a little bit, this is not ideal. I mean, I'm, 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 you know, I'm cooking on a barrel, so I'm, I'm already doing great. All right, so what we're gonna do, same, same, this is not a ketchup base, this is water, sugar, achote, and pectin, that's it. Gonna heat them up, still on a watery side, and then the next shot will be a little bit thicker, okay? I'm not a big fan of sticky ribs, so Mexicana barbecue, now sticky. Here we go, and we let it roll, same thing. Now, two important things, low fire and clean smoke. And of course, a touch of awesomeness. Now, finally, at the end, you start seeing the difference. The Texas style ribs, they have a nice, darker mahogany color, typical of Texas style ribs. Instead, the other one, they have a, a more red, bright color. Uh, it's optional, but what you can do at this point, uh, we can heat them up with a glaze, 50% water, 50% sugar. Uh, you can avoid it, but uh, it's gonna give to the Texas style a brighter color. Instead, what I did with uh, pimped up ribs, I just uh, heat them up with uh, a thicker glaze before. The ribs are ready to be served. Uh, because the glaze of the Texas style is so watery, it won't be sticky. And because uh, the glaze of the other one uh, was a thicker glaze, but it cooked the second time that I put it on for about, about 10 minutes, it won't be sticky either. And that'll be all for today. If you want to see more content like this, uh, support my channel by subscribing and hitting the notification button. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook as Texicana BBQ. Huge thank you goes to the man itself that helped me out with the shooting. Alton the dog father, go check him out, his amazing YouTube channel. And also Ryan from Backline Fabrication to let me use one of his wonderful creations. Next video will be just uh, about that. Ciao! We're good? Wait till oh, yeah. Ryan finishes running his mouth. All right, now uh, about uh, 50 minutes. Because of the difference of temperature, the brisket is gonna be cooked. Yeah, make some more noise, why not? Which comes from the Urukus, the frog, which comes... All right. When you want the ribs to be tough. When I, when I say pork ribs, you... you, you Are you gonna look, look over it? Am I on the frame? Yeah. Yeah. Are you gonna you look matter, over at me? All right. Go. You said. What's up everybody, Texicana Barbecue. Today, we're going to cook pork ribs. Here you go. Yeah, you should do that again. I so think you should fucking know. When you say pork ribs, toss them. That yeah. way they're coming in and you're yeah. not having to reach and then. Oh, this is your first time now, this is boring. Okay, good. <laughs> this is your first time. No, I just make a B-roll some shit like that.